What's cracking, everyone? I'm Venom Mysterio, back with game two of Stefano vs. Marine Lord. Up top of Vanny Research Station, we have Marine Lord, the Blue Terran from France. And on the bottom, we have Stefano, the Red Zerg, one of the most winning foreign pro gamers ever. This guy has taken major lands, and he was one of the most dominant foreigners, especially in 2012 and 2013. He's absolutely top tier, a macro zerg, and a guy who can pretty much play every style. Now, it's interesting to note that Stefano has never been someone who likes mutos a whole lot, which is kind of odd, because whenever you think of great zergs, they're usually mutalisk players, or they're very good with the mutalisk. Like if you look at StarCraft 1, Jadong is a great example. If you look at StarCraft 2, Idra was a Muta player, Ness T was a Muta player, DRG was a Muta player, Scarlet's a Muta player. Whereas if you look at Stefano, he wasn't really known for his Muta ZVT like a lot of those players I mentioned were. He was more known for his Roach and Infestor use versus Protoss. Now whenever Stefano was a legend, he would just make Protoss players look stupid. And one of the ways that he would do this was with his Roach play. He had a very famous build called the 12 minute Roach Max that essentially was a very fast three base build. You go pool first and then 15 hatch and then you would make another hatch around 18 to 21 and basically you would get up to a decent number of drones and flood the map with Roaches and this is before Ravagers so you would oftentimes just kill Protoss with Mass Roach of course, he's really well known for being a master of the Broodlord and Fester style that became wildly popular around the end of 2012. And he's currently up 1-0 in this best of 5. Last game was on Daybreak. If you missed the VOD, go check it out. It's on my channel. Marine Lord went for a fake Banshee opener, which was interesting because recently the Raven got a little bit of a buff and the auto turret just shreds drones now and the Reaper is going to run into wings and then escape. So good prediction by Stefano there to have his wings in the correct spot. Stefano's taken his third, he started ling speed and he's droning hard. Marine Lord's expo is about to finish and at this point, he's kind of peeking around with this Reaper. There's really not a whole lot to see. Starport is on the way, and double Hellion production has started. I'll be interested to see whether or not Marine Lord does that Banshee, fake Banshee, Raven open again. Because, essentially in the first game, it was a great little fate. If you were just opening with that build in a best of five, I would consider it to be very strong but I'm curious as to see whether or not he's going to keep doing that build or if he ever incorporates an actual Banshee build. So it looks as though he's going to either go Banshee or do the same Raven energy upgraded opener. Let's see. So he starts a Viking. So this appears to be a very similar build to the build he did last game where he got a Pult Viking very quickly. And if we look at Stefano's vision yeah, he's being harassed, but it's pretty in inconsequential. He has a ramp right here. He's not really going to take a lot of damage. He loses a tumor there, which is kind of irritating. And Marine Lord keeps producing Hellions, normal stuff, and he is getting the Raven Energy Upgrade, Corvid Reactor. And here's the Pult Viking used to hunt down Overlords. And it's kind of weird that he would bring it out here, because the first Overlord usually goes like up here. And the second one is usually like right here, or over here. More harassment coming from Marine Lord, but this Hellion's very low. It only has 13 hit points. Speedling is out for Stefano. He has to be a little bit careful though, because more Hellions are coming out. He's actually going to surround Marine Lord here, but Marine Lord does have those reinforcements arrive at the right moment and kills the wings. Seven more drones on the way for Stefano. He's getting double evos too, and Marine Lord tried to peek in there to see if there were any drones at the third, but Stefano had his queens close, and here we see the Raven is finally going to be added. And this is really interesting, so one thing that I want to note 
is that whenever you do this build, you immediately swap over to the tech lab and you make a Viking and start Corvid Reactor immediately. Your Corvid Reactor will finish after you make a Viking and a Raven. So it's similar to how as Zerg, if you start the Pathogen Gland upgrade at 31 seconds, all of your Infestors that finish will immediately have the energy, the starting energy upgrade. Because essentially you need to know whenever the upgrade starts, the timing as to which when you can start production. The point of all this being is if you do this build and you make a Pult Viking and then you get Corvid Reactor right when you have the Starport add-on to the Tech Lab, and then you go Viking Raven, your Raven will finish right after Corvid Reactor finishes. So that's nice to know. Obviously if you do builds like this where you're investing the gas into getting an energy upgrade, it's kind of useless if you don't take full advantage of it. And that's something that I didn't really notice about this build the first time. So this is another interesting thing about the Marine Lord build. Now I think it's worth noting as we see Marine Lord go into bio here that these ravens do a lot of damage and he kills three drones and throughout the game we're going to see a lot of harassment like this. Where Marine Lord just peeks in, drops two auto turrets and then has a shift move command. Stefano runs his drones away. Now this auto turret does a ton of damage, especially to drones, but the auto turrets don't last very long. They only last 7 seconds. Now there's actually an upgrade you can get from the engineering bay that makes them last longer. As we can see the Polt Viking is going for its third kill. Scan in the main here, as more auto turret harass goes down. Third base is being floated out here. So this is a cool little opening for Marine Lord. He fakes as though he's going Banshee, and then harasses with these Ravens. And it's even more useful because a lot of times Zergs will build a Spore, and one Spore in the Mineral Line isn't nearly as effective against Ravens as it is against a Cloaked Banshee. Fourth base is being started here, and another Ovi dies, the fourth, and Stefano is supply blocked. He started 2-2 though, and Ovi speed, as well as Aspire. Marine Lord's starting to push out here. Stefano has some Ling Queen though. And there are no medevacs out. Actually, yeah, here they are. They're just now arriving. And the fourth base is going to be pressured by Stefano. Stefano focus fires the medevacs with the queens. And focus fires the ground army with the lings, obviously. And here come the bands. Marine Lord needs to focus fire. Boom, boom, boom. Beautiful focus fire there by Marine Lord. Now, granted, though, those were slow banelings. So that's like playing a story game on easy. to snipe those slow banelings, especially coming off of creep, but Marine Lord executes the micro. As you see a queen from Stefano die, that's really irritating because more importantly than losing the queen, Stefano has to wait for the new one to make, so that's a pain in the ass. We see Marine Lord continuing to do this raven harass, but now it looks like he's trying to walk his ravens home to safety and try to get them repaired. But this one's in a little bit of peril here. Stefano unable to snipe it. And the fourth base is being pressured again. As Marine Lord's kiting back, he'll pick up though. And until Stefano has these mutas out and this Bane speed finish, Marine Lord basically can poke and prod with impunity. Because look, all he, can, all he has to do is pick up. There he goes. See, he got his whole army surrounded and still lost next to nothing. Widow Mines are out here for Marine Lord. He's going to continue to pressure this middle area. Now Stefano has quite a bit of creep spread already pushed out through here. One tough area is this ramp if you do elect to take this forth. And you don't spread creep up here, a lot of times Terrans will siege up here. Creep spread being cleared out, and I think the Polt Viking died. Yeah, it did. Seven mutas on the way for Stefano. He already has one. Which, one Muta, you know, that's about as useful as the Cowboys defensive back Morris Claiborne. Here come the Mutaling Bane, and the Widow Mines do big splash damage onto the bio. Oh my god. That was more friendly fire than slapped in sands, as we see Marine Lord is just going to get stomped out there. And a huge part of that was the friendly fire, and another big part of that was the upgrade advantage. Notice Stefano has 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you have 2-2 two, two versus Terran's 1-1, one, one, it can be crushing. We can see the Widow Mines here do a little bit more friendly fire, but this time they kill quite a few Lings. 
and there are a lot of marines out here. Remember, marines make extremely quickly, so Marine Lord can continue to pump out tons of marine here, eight at a time, as he's adding even more barracks, and they arrive very quickly to the front lines. Notice he's researching armor for his mech units. Of course, this includes mines. That's something a lot of people forget to do, is if you're going mines, you have to build the armory anyway to get 2-2 two, two, and 3-3 three, three infantry upgrades. So you might as well spend 100 a 100 to get at least the very first level of armor if you're going mine style. Because once your mines get plus 2 or plus 3 defense, they're much harder to pick off. And oftentimes whenever Zerg goes for these styles with Mutalisk, Baneling, and Zergling, they see you commit to heavy, heavy mine, they don't really make a whole lot of mutas. Whereas if you're just going for a manly bio or bio tank, the Zerg will continue to build up their mute account. It's kind of their bread and butter money unit. But with mines, the risk of losing all of your mutas is so great that sometimes we see even when Zergs go for these muta styles, they'll make between 8 and 16. Usually the money number is around 11 or 12 with plus 1 because that's really good at sniping off muto mines, that number. I think it's like 11 mutas with plus 1 will one shot a mine. Well that's the thing, if you start to upgrade your mind's defense, then you start to fuck with Zerg. Zerg's used to, oh, once I have about this many meters, I can run in and pick off a mine. If Zerg miss micros and dives balls deep into your mine, they can take severe game ending damage. Especially if they run in with their muta cloud. A little bit of a lean counter here, but quite honestly, Marine Lord is playing very defensively. He was waiting for that, and it looks like he's going to float over and try to take this base. This will probably be a PF. Now, I'm kind of curious as to why he didn't take the gold. And I think the answer is pretty obvious now that I think about it. This fourth is very close in proximity to this fourth. Oftentimes Terran players want to take their fourth base in a position where they rally all their shit out to it. It's kind of close to where they want to attack the Zerg. That way the point of contingency from them to the Zerg is not only close, but it's not way off on the other side of the map. But this is another reason why the gold would be kind of good, because once you turret this area up, it's hard for Zerg to fly in your natural. And on this map, they'll almost always fly into your natural with Muta. Here we see Stefano going for a huge flank. And he might try to attack two locations at once here. Here's Stefano coming in from all angles. He's attacking the mineral line of the third, doing some damage over here at the fourth base too. Kills a little bit of army, but there are a lot of liberators out. And suddenly Stefano has to be a little bit careful I feel like because some of these mutas are pretty wounded he's, these liberators do a lot of damage and here we go Stefano pretty much has to run away here as once you get over four liberators the splash is very scary and speaking of scary an overseer does get picked off so Stefano might have a little bit less detection here if we go to the units tab mines could be an issue more Ling Bane being morphed here for Elis the phenomenal French Zerg, but here are the mines in the middle of the map, big engagement, and once again Stefano runs forward with quite a few lings and doesn't waste any bands and does more damage with friendly fire than he does with bands, quite honestly. Stefano has constantly been microing very well against bands, or excuse me, against mines. Notice that whenever the mines burrow, Stefano runs in not all of his lings where he loses them all, but enough lings where he does more than actually trigger the fire. He makes it where the lings are in such great number where they actually sit on top of the Terran army long enough to cause severe damage. Pretty unlucky hit there by Little Bo to get the one, but nice splitting by Stefano too. And Little Bo's 3-3 is about to finish. This is going to get tricky. As we see a scan at this gold base. Great creep spread, by the way. If this gold ever tries to get taken, Stefano will be able to attack it very easily. He's also going to be able to see aggression coming at his gold base. Little Bo's like, oh my, or it's not Little Bo, it's Marine Lord, I'm sorry. Marine Lord is like, oh my gosh, you have a lot of creep spread here. I'm going to have to siege liberators and not really commit to that. And Stefano, this is the product of good creep spread. As soon as something happens on that side of the map, that's his cue to move over and Bane's into the PF. And the PF could die here as it gets very, very low, agonizingly low, and Stefano does kill it. And at the third base, even more SCVs died, as you see. Stefano's up in the 30s. 
And I know I've probably called Marine Lord Little Bo more than once. That's because Little Bo recently retired, and supposedly this is Marine Lord's last tournament. That usually doesn't last with pro gamers, but we'll see. So Marine Lord does have 3-3. Three, three. Stefano's 3-3 three, three is getting close to finishing which is important, but Stefano will be at a huge disadvantage until the 3-3 finishes. He has ultras on the way, so Stefano is at huge risk for like the next 30 seconds. And once all these things finish, excuse me, once all these things finish, he'll be fine. So five ultras have finished. 3-3 three, three and Kitness plating is about to be done. Stefano wants that to finish before he attacks, but here he goes. And he fakes out, as there are a lot of Liberators, this would be a very precarious engagement. 3-3 three, three is still quite a late ways away, but the Kitness Plating... Well, where's the Kitness Plating? Oh, it's done. Yeah, well, okay, whatever. Stefano's gonna lose this base, obviously, because all of these Liberation Zones, that's a lot of passion. Notice these Liberators are plus two, they do a lot of damage. And Stefano's in this weird spot where he wants to engage, but can in action he can't actually engage into Liberator Marauder. It's almost impossible. And he's continuing to kite back here into this unkillable composition is Marine Lord. And Marine Lord runs back here. Big shots there from the Widow Mines, my goodness. And Stefano at this point wants to clear this out, but he's having an exceptionally difficult time. Notice that Marine Lord has started to mine from this base again, and he wants to start dropping, which is the correct move. Now, this force is very good, but it's not very good at pressing into things. Like, it, once it sets up shop, that composition is very strong, but it's not the kind of composition that excels over time. It, 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 it being aggressive, I should say. So Stefano's going to run in here and start to do some damage to the third, but... The wall-in is going to prevent him from doing anything real. And Stefano is in the middle of the map here. The Widow Mine goes off, but he does kill it. And Stefano wants to counter-attack, but doesn't really have the opportunity to do so. And a drop is going to occur at the gold base here. One thing that Marine Lord has been doing is defending very well. We see some players who like to play aggressive, kind of just rally everything out constantly. But Marine Lord doesn't really play like that. He's very good at defending while he attacks. Marine Lord's going into Ghost too. And that's one thing that I've noticed about Marine Lord's play. Is he's not one of these Terrans who will just stay on Marine Marauder all game and just try to drop you. Like he does drop a lot, but it's not his style of play to persistently stay on that unit composition. He'll tech up, he'll go into Liberator, he'll go into Ghost. We can see already that he's used a lot of Liberators. Notice that he's upgrading them well too. These Liberators are 2-1. They pack a huge punch. Stefano has countered those air upgrades with air upgrades of his own. And Ghosts are out here for Marine Lord. He does not have Cloak. This is a ton of gas to lose actually. And we see in the middle of the map, big engagement going on is there are no Ghosts. All the Ghosts got caught out. And suddenly Marine Lord is kiting back further and further. And Stefano might want to just snipe that sensor tower while he runs away, but decides not to do it. And this middle base was not a PF yet. Stefano wants to snipe it, but just doesn't have the firepower. He really needs Banes. And suddenly, Stefano was able to get those Lings in the main, and he's wreaking havoc. Marine Lord is able to secure this base, but at what cost? Stefano, after he ravaged all those ghosts, flew into the main and started to do some damage. Marine Lord will start to clean it up, but he did lose a reasonable amount. He lost some SCBs, he had to lift a base. Big pain in the ass for Marine Lord. Lots of low ultras for Stefano, he should consider transfusing those. And he picks off two Liberators, does the French Zerg, and we can see he's doing more damage in the main still. Does not have Burrow, mind you. And no adrenal glands either, so Stefano is going to press up into this fourth and try to kill the army of Marine Lord. But Marine Lord is going to kite back and lose his middle base because quite simply he didn't have the firepower to deal with that. He had to bring everything back to deal with all those links in the main. And that is a huge pro 
of sending wings in the main of your opponent. Obviously they have to deal with that, oftentimes they will overcommit and leave vulnerabilities elsewhere. That is one thing, as you see another attempted Ling run by, there's no wall, no wall, this is like the US southern border before Trump became president, there's just no security here at all. Call this El Paso. But more Ling's in the main here, the starport does die. Now that was extremely important, that starport, because Marine Lord, obviously he's upgraded a lot as far as armory upgrades go. He went as far as to get plus two attack for the libs and then plus one defense. So this means that not being able to adequately produce the liberators that he really wants is going to be an issue. Stefano is playing well, but he's getting to the point where the next base he wants to take isn't really reasonable. I mean, it's it's Marine Lord's gold, or this gold, by the way, which is like not even a screen away from Marine Lord's base. Marine Lord does have a little bit left, but at the same time, he's kind of running out of steam here if we go to income. More ghosts coming from Marine Lord. It's worth noting that in games like this, Terran should just be shitting on Zerg with income. Because if you consider how the income works in the late game, Terran will often have multiple CCs. So if Terran can just float one of their bases over, they can destroy Zerg with ease as far as income goes, because they can just drop 4cc mule on a base. Stefano is sitting here in the middle of the map trying to figure out how to win and Broodlords is going to be what he ends up going for here. Stefano has been running around with Lings a ton. Very good move there. Notice that even though Marine Lord defends very well and has mines set up, Stefano was still able to enter the base and turn the tide of the game. Stefano was playing very back and forth with Marine Lord all game, but once those Lings got into base, it was kind of the turning point. Marine Lord is going to try to aggress onto this middle gold base, and this is going to be where it gets a little bit tricky, because Marine Lord has this unkillable ground comp, where it's like Ghost, Marauder, Liberator, but once Stefano has Brood Lords, that composition isn't that great. Sure, the Ghosts are pretty much good against a lot of things, but... At the same time, Liberator Widowmine Marauder is really meant to shit on Ultras. We can see more Liberation Zones coming out here. But, on the Units tab, only two Corruptor. Seven more on the way. And Stefano's going to start to attack with Broodlords. And we can see a drop in the, in the uh, well, I guess this would be the third base at this point and another drop in the main, so Marine Lord is aware of how immobile Stefano's army is. He's trying to drop him. This is exactly what you want to do. Big transfuse going down there on the important base. And Stefano is waiting for these corruptors to hatch so he can push. So Marine Lord is in a very difficult situation now. He did two drops at once, which is what he needed to do, but at the same time, they didn't do a whole lot of damage. Stefano defended them very well. Ghost Marine is coming out here, and a Viper is on the way for Stefano, as well as more Corruptors. Now, Stefano has like the ultimate Zerg late game comp, Ultra Queen, Bane, Corruptor, Brood, and he's getting some Spellcasters now, too. Obviously, a couple Infestors would make this perfect. See a Snipe go off. Now, Snipe is a cast ability that does a ton of damage, 170 damage. So, basically, Snipe is an ability that is made to shit on these high HP units. Back in the day, Snipe did, uh, I think it was like 45 plus damage to Massive. As you see, the CC just gets bopped there. And that's a product of plus two air upgrades and plus three ground upgrades. Scan going down, Marine Lord desperately saying, oh yeah, there's this gold over here, I'll finally take it. Of course, there was a Lingbrode over there for a long time, preventing him from doing so. And Stefano at this point wants to break Marine Lord, but... He's broken this middle base, he's kind of fighting over this side base. Marine Lord is continuing to drop and be obnoxious. Now Stefano runs Lings over to try to defend said drop. 
but Marine Lord's going to kite back and pick up. Now Stefano has a lair and a hive, which is great, because if the hive dies, he won't be screwed. And the Hero Ultra does die. But Marine Lord drops into the main. And some more Lings in the base. Lings come out, deflect the drop. Marine Lord might be thinking about dropping out here, but he accidentally brought an SCV, so this is just two Marauders, and they're not going to last very long. Now that Stefano is nearing Max, he might choose to attack. Now, it is very tricky to attack with such a ludicrously slow comp, and it is very weak to drops. As we see, this base did go down. I'm going to have to rewind a bit, because this game is coming to an end. So the reason Stefano didn't attack earlier is because with drops, they're very good at picking apart immobile players. Not to say that Stefano can't multitask, but Broodlords, Queens, and Ultras are very slow and shitty at defending drops. You see that base dive. Now the fact that this base died was largely due to the fact Stefano had a Ling Brode here and knew exactly when he, Marine Lord wanted to take it. So great move by Stefano there. And here we go, Corruptors are aggressing into this middle base. As you see, yet again, Marine Lord has re-expanded to the middle, but the DPS from all those broods is huge, and rat, stay rat, snipe, 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 coming down, but it's not enough, as Stefano was able to do a mixture of transfuse and out DPSing onto those snipes. If you enjoyed that and want to see the next game, subscribe for more.